So uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to create mobile UI buttons. So for example, I'm using the car controller tutorial and uh, I'm using my, the buttons I created to translate that to our input. So when we press the gas pedal, it goes forward, the brake pedal brakes, and uh, also we have left and right, so right and left. Uh, as you can see here, when I press the gas pedal on the, here, uh, it, uh, it has a is pressed function and a dap and press. So when we press the gas pedal, it, go, it uh, returns true. And the dump and press is basically an, a smaller, more sensitive way to actually press the button because when you press the gas pedal, obviously you don't press it from zero to one immediately, but uh, you go uh, from zero to one smoothly. So you increment its uh, frame and uh, you have a smooth throttle control and same thing goes for left and right. So to create the buttons uh, for our uh, car controller, which we will be using. Uh, I have uh, created these two images, uh, which are basically just a handbrake, sorry, a brake pedal and the gas pedal. And uh, we need to put them on the UI now. So by pressing two, you go to a 2D view, and we can create a button with uh, by going to the game object UI button text mesh pro. Yeah, okay. So we need to import the TextMess Pro since Unity 2021, I think. It's required, so we do it really quickly. And uh, so now we have a button, uh, which as we can see here, or anyway, here, uh, that's at the button. Uh, and so what we want to do is use these emotes here for our button, for our brake pedal, our left and right, and our gas pedal. So to do that, we need to convert these two to sprites. So we go to the settings, we go to the texture type, and we convert it to sprites. So now that we are that we have converted them to sprites, as you can see, when we try to put them somewhere, it's all black. So to change that, uh, we go to the settings of the image again, we go to advanced and alpha source to grayscale. That's gonna just make it so that the black is actually the transparency of the image. So now we go to our button that we have created, and we just drag and drop the gas pedal to the source image. We create, we make it a little bit uh, more seeable. So let's see, ah, that looks good. Uh, maybe we can recreate the actual size and make it smaller to fit our screen. Uh, I'll put this here so that we can see what we're doing. So yeah, all right. Here's our gas pedal. And I'll copy paste that to create our brake pedal as well, which will be, which we will drag and drop the emotes from. So now we have two pedals, which we can actually make this a little bit smaller. And we can also remove the text because we don't need it. So we click this and delete it. Perfect. So now we have two buttons uh, in our scene. Uh, but uh, how do we use it to create, uh, to move our car? Because the button in Unity actually has a non-click event, but that fires only once when the when you the pointer is up. So in a racing game where you always want to know if the player is clicking the button or if he's not, you can't really use that. So you need to create your own button system for that. So we will create a new script which we will call my button, and we will call it. So okay, our script has opened. So now what we want is basically have a variable that's a bool that basically says if the player is pressing the button, then return true. If not, then return false, obviously. So we will create a public bool which we will call is pressed, which is pretty intuitive. Uh, and uh, then we need to create a function that actually sets up our button. So to do that, we will create a void which we will call set up button. Uh, which will create an event system, an event trigger on the click up and the click down. So basically when you click down the button, it will return true. And then if you click up, the is pressed will become false. So to do that, we need to create an event trigger, but uh, which we will call trigger. But as we can see here, there is a problem. It says that there is no something as the event trigger. We just go to show potential fixes. Uh, and it says using Unity, Unity event system, which is what we basically want. So we click that, it will add this library here, and now we're good to use it. 
So we will create that. We will add a sorry. We will create a component uh, that's called events trigger on our game object. And uh, now we want to actually create the pointer down and pointer up. So we will create a var pointer down, which will be a new event trigger property. If I write correctly. Sorry, entry, not property. Uh, we will use the event ID that's called event trigger type dot pointer down, which basically we tell Unity that uh, we want to do something if the if we're if the pointer is down on that system. Uh, and now we go to our uh, event trigger and actually create a function that uh, is returned when we click the button. So we add listener with uh, uh, that actually uh, goes to our uh, to a function which we will create shortly. So here we need to create a function that's gonna be called on click up and turn down. So to do that we go again down. We will create a public void that's called on click down, which will basically get the is pressed uh, variable and we'll set it to true. It's pretty intuitive. And we can also copy paste that and uh, make the same thing for on click up with the only difference being that this is going to be false. And so here we copy paste that to here and we make it a function. And so now we have an event trigger entry that whenever we press down, it will call this function here. So uh, it will call this function. This is is pressed function. And uh, the is pressed button will be called true. Okay. So now we do the same thing for uh, pointer up. Perfect. So now we need to actually uh, add these uh, event systems, uh, event entries to our trigger. So we go to our trigger and we add uh, triggers, <laughs> dot add, uh, which will be our pointer down and our pointer up again. So before we check uh, if, the, if the button works, we need to call the function. So we go to the start function property and uh, we call our setup function. So setup button. And so now we ensure whenever, whenever we uh, launch a new script, this is going to set up our button and we can call is pressed whenever we want. So let's check it out. Okay, so we press here, play. And as you can see, uh, there is this my button property, which is the uh, which uh, has an is pressed variable, and whenever we press our gas pedal, it actually turns true, as you can see here. Well, I'm pressing it down, and when I lift up, it goes false. It's great. So now we put the exact same button for our uh, brake pedal. We add the script that's called my button, and that's perfect. And now we want to set it up for our car controller. So we go to our car controller. And as you can see here, on our check input function, we use the input dot get axis vertical and horizontal based on uh, if we want steering input or if we want uh, our uh, or if we want to turn left or right. So what we do now is basically create a new variable which we will call uh, our gas pedal and our brake pedal. And uh, now these two have a function, so I have a variable which we can call on, which is called is pressed, which works perfectly fine for our uh, position here. So we go to our check input and we check if gas pedal dot is pressed or our brake pedal is pressed. Uh, what we can now do is, uh, if our sorry, if only our gas pedal is pressed, we can increase the gas input by our uh, by one, or we can decrease uh, our gas input to minus one if we break. Uh, so what do we do now? Uh, because this is a float, this returns a float. It doesn't return a bool. We can actually create our button to be smooth. 
So we actually go to our button and we create a new variable, which we will call public uh, float uh, dump and press, I guess, sensitivity. Nah, dump and press, I guess, which we will have as zero. And we will also create a new float, which we will have as sensitivity, which we will set to uh, five. Nah, two. Okay. So uh, on our update function, we check if uh, is pressed. So if our button is pressed, and if so, we increase the value of uh, our uh, sensitivity, sorry, of our uh, dump and press by our sensitivity times the time it takes for each frame. So time to the all the time. And uh, we do the exact opposite thing for uh, if it's not pressed. So we actually subtract our sensitivity. And now, because this does not stop at one or zero, we want to clamp it down to one and zero. So we go to our dump and press, and we you call the clamp 01, which basically uh, stops the, uh, the float being below zero and above one. And we just use as input our dump and press. Perfect. Uh, so now what we can do is uh, have our gas input and increase its value by whatever our uh, gas pedal dot, sorry, dot uh, dump and press is. And we can do the exact same thing if we press the brake pedal. Sorry. So now, but instead, when we press the brake pedal, we want to decrease that to be minus one. So we just subtract that. And now we check if that works. So we go back to Unity. We go to our car, whenever this loads. Perfect. So we go to our car, and now we see that there are two variables which you cannot see because uh, of my camera. Wait, let me move my camera. Okay. So uh, you can see that there are two buttons here, which we can call our button one, which I think is our gas pedal, and our button two, uh, we'll move this here. And now, wait, let me move my camera. Perfect. And uh, now, when we press our gas pedal, it should go forward, and uh, when we press our back pedal, it should go left, and it should go back. And this doesn't work because. So let's see why this doesn't work. Uh, dot is pressed. Oh yeah. So uh, our problem here is uh, we are we are actually calling the input to be to set it to our input get access to the vertical. Uh, but we want it to first set itself from the axis and then we check if the buttons are pressed or not. So now this should work 100%. Perfect. So let's try it again. Perfect. So as you can see, it goes forward, it goes backwards again. Perfect. So now we have our mobile buttons that works whenever we use them. So we can actually use a left and right as well, uh, which will create it a new uh, button. Uh, button left. Let's uh, left because we're we'll gonna mess this up. Uh, this is our gas pedal. Right pedal. And we will actually use just the left symbol and the right symbol just to make it easier for us. Perfect. And uh, we add our uh, my button property here as well. And uh, now we go back to our car script, which is here. And we add some uh, new public floats. Sorry, uh, my buttons, which is the left button. And our left, the right button. And uh, we go again to our check input. And uh, the steering input, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we can basically just copy paste this. And instead of gas pedal, we go uh, right input, right button. And uh, this is going to be steering input. And right button again. And uh, this is going to be left button, uh, steering input, and left pedal, left button. Perfect. So let's try this. Okay, so we go back to our car, and we go to our left button, and we actually use the left button, right button again, and let's try this. It should work, I hope so. <laughs> uh, okay, so the, pre the gas pedal works, and let's see if this goes left. It goes left, perfect. So, uh, gas pedal, right, left, and brake, perfect. 
Uh, I don't have a multi-touch monitor right now to check it, if it works with a mobile button, but it does work. You need to believe me on that. So this is basically our uh, mobile button system. It's really easy to understand. And ah, thanks for watching, and I hope you like this. Ah, take care. So uh, because I forgot, uh, as you can see, when we resize the window, it actually doesn't resize well. It just stays. It lets the button stay in the screen. So to fix that, we go to our uh, left pedal, for example, and we drag and drop this little anchor here, which uh, basically tells Unity to keep. Uh, our uh, button exactly on that place and resize it accordingly to where our uh, screen resizes. So if uh, the button, so if the screen resizes, our button resizes with it as well. So uh, let's check it out right now. Yeah, can't seem to hold it. Okay, perfect. So yeah, perfect. So this resizes exactly like our screen. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. And take care.